Good evening, everybody. What a pleasure it is to be here. Um, I've just um, come back from a beautiful land called Bali, and uh, I've been doing lots of yoga. And one of the things that they do before you do yoga, they actually just salute each other and say namaste. And really, that means that, just like you were saying, you know, about we all as one family, all as one in one unity. So, namaste, everyone, and enjoy my speech today. Okay, here I am. We've had such a beautiful array of speakers, and I'm the corporate woman for you tonight, okay? And what I want to share with you this evening is really looking, like Michelle, Michelle said, exploration. It's looking into our souls, exploring our souls, who we are. And me being a corporate woman, um, I want to look at organizational spirituality and finding your corporate soul, okay? Because I really believe that we need to look at the reason for business, particularly now when so many charities and organizations at the grassroots of our society need help. We need to be working together in harmony. So like business is powered by humanity or humanity is powered by business. We need this harmony to help really make a difference in this world. Right, let me get my clicker. So here we go. Um, I want to start, hello, by just looking at unity and one of the most fundamental units in our society, the family. I am the daughter of an absolutely great British inventor called Peter Gibbons. And I'm just so proud. Even though I got married, I never changed my name, this Gibbons name. And just before I tell you about our family and, and, and what really it's achieved, just have a look at this. You know, the family is the most fundamental unit in society. One family can influence another, then another, then 10, 100, 1,000 more, and then the whole of society can benefit. Well, I feel being this daughter of this amazing, I actually, he's not around anymore, so I can actually call him a mad scientist, you know, this great inventor. He has actually sparked a revolution out in this world and made a big change. So I'm really proud that my family is making a difference. Uh, hello? That way. Yeah, it's not a very good picture, but Peter Gibbons, uh, my father, he was a scientist. He designed the glue that the motorway bridges are put together in. He designed the anti-static coatings for carpets. And then he designed so many different products. But do you know, he was an inventor. He gave away all his inventions and never put a commercial price tag on his inventions. And then it was my mum's idea one day. She said, hey, Peter, why don't you set up in business with Dawn? So we both looked at each other, neither of us commercial. And we said, OK, we'll have a go. We'll go for it because of my energy and enthusiasm and the will to succeed and my father's technical ability. And I just put our family crest up here because, listen, we're looking at soul and spirit, yeah? Just look at you and your families, that spirit, where does it come from? Where does your inspiration come from? Well, for me, it was my father. And this name, Gibbons, our family crest, underneath it in Latin, says, Nitto Dono Supero. And when you translate that, I strive till I overcome. And if you start your own business and you develop a business, you have a lot of obstacles to overcome. So, you know, you have to have that rawr, raw spirit inside to really make a difference. Okay. So the business that we set up was an amazing organization called Flowcrete. And um, we developed a global organization, 30 offices around the world, 12 manufacturing plants. So just let's go back to this spirit and the soul. 
One of the things that you family units bring is love. And my business, not my business, our business with all my staff, you know, uh, all over the world, we had that unity of love within our organisation. Now, all the love hearts are actually where the manufacturing plants were. So here am I standing in front of you here, a woman that started a global manufacturing organisation and in the construction sector. There's only less than 1% women that actually own construction companies, you know? So it was amazing. But I think it was because of this amazing, um, loving relationship we had with all the staff and we really felt as one. So what, what did we influence? So I'm just going to tell you as an example about the spirit and soul of our organisation, and then we'll have a look at other organisations. So what did we catalyse? So what my dad did, he catalyzed a revolution in healthy, sustainable flooring. He brought health and well-being to the world at our feet, and that was our strap line for the world at our feet. And so he founded this company that was transforming environments globally um, to inspire everybody who lived, worked, and, and, and learned on the Flow Creek floors. We floored um, Space Station, NASA. We floored major airports all over the world, Hong Kong, Kuala Lumpur, Dubai, and also major manufacturing plants. Okay, so we really made a difference. But can I say, I meet lots of entrepreneurs and mega business executives. And I meet lots of people driven by, aha, the three Ps. Yeah, but they put that profit on top. And it really winds me up, this does, because really, I liked what you put, um, you know, Anne, about people, the planet, and profit. Now, with me, I never, ever said in my whole career um, of running the businesses that I wanted to be a millionaire, okay? My driver was something different. I wanted to make, let me move on, I wanted to make a difference in this world, especially in the construction industry. Um, I'm sorry, I've missed, I did have a lovely slide, right, of a builder's bottom cleavage, but <laughs> I've forgotten to put it in. But anyway, yeah, here's me, a woman, yeah? I was so fed up of going on sites and seeing bottom cleavage. So, you know, I wanted to clean up the construction industry. Now, you may smile about that, but it's quite serious because in the flooring industry, it was riddled with back and knee problems. So then, with all the innovation with my father, he developed the flooring systems that you didn't have to bend over and, you know, of course, it was all men laying all the floors as well. Um, you know, women's bottom cleavage would be quite attractive, wouldn't it? So we wouldn't bother with that. Anyway, so basically what we did then is revolutionise these flowing, self-levelling flooring that you could just lay the flooring standing up. So removing the back and knee problems, there were some serious issues there. And then, oh, my beautiful father, you know, the inspiration behind the whole organisation he got cancer. And when you have someone connected with cancer, you then meet so many other people. And there was a lot of cancer in the industry. If you looked at our industry, because I started this 30 years ago this year, okay, and there was lots of solvents and toxins, carcinogenic products like tar extended systems. And actually, the industry, it really well, you could say, almost say it killed my father, but he, it was one of the factors with the cancer. So when that, when that happened and I saw what the issues were, the toxins in the products, then I took on to basically take the industry by storm and remove all the toxins out. So it's that soul and spirit that you want to really make a difference, you know? And then the other one, uh, developed this silver additive to put in to make everything, uh, you know, kill bugs. And then, of course, the planet factor. The flooring industry was a nightmare. I think second only, or on par with, you know, the decoration industry with the packaging. They used to use thousands and thousands of buckets on one project, you know. So basically, we took it on then saying, right, we're just going to have one container and we're going to do it in bulk 
and everything. It's just the technology and the training of all the operatives that, you know, that will make it work. So we did that. So the philosophy was change, revolution in those industries, which was so important. And the other thing is, once you have a passion like this, your staff, um, they engage with you and they become as passionate as you. What, what do we say? It is me. So basically, a lot of the staff, they almost want the tattoo, you know, um, on them because they so believe in, you know, what you're trying to achieve. Okay. Right. Move on. Right. So just to show you, is my mum's idea, but my dad's inspiration. And like now, uh, this great man, we're talking about families, this was uh, my husband, and he's now taking the business on to even greater, um, greater success all over the world. So I'm married, and I actually recruited my husband, and he, he's taking, taking the, the world on by storm, and it's going from strength to strength now. Okay, and that's my first employee over there, Gary. Oh, right, better hurry up. Come on, come on, Hello. The other thing, just a, just a couple of more slides about the business and then we'll move on to really looking at the spirituality. Feng Shui, you mentioned. I've just trademarked a brand called Fun Shui and I'm going to revolutionise the UK and get Feng Shui. I'm very passionate about bringing Eastern philosophies into the UK because I've been laughed at. Now, a lot of the speakers today especially you, I want to shake your hand, I think you're wonderful, <laughs> authentic, yeah, from the heart, speaking the truth, yeah, and I really believe in these Eastern philosophies, that we need to bring these, to bring calm into the Western world, so I use Feng Shui, I use the lion dancing every year to change the energies, and it was beautiful, we went from great success, Okay, let me just clip through. I did all sorts of crazy things, raising money for charities, you know. Uh, anyway, we'll move on. Girls with balls. <laughs> I'm not going to go further. Dancing in the streets, you know, on carnivals. And now, um, this one, this is basically um, daffodil is a sign of hope. That's a bear that we developed in a big um, community um, event. And that was my bear, which is a bear of hope in memory of my father. Yeah. And we have a day, like we call it Daffodil Day every year, to actually teach people how to avoid cancer, you know, lifestyle. So, yeah. Right. Move forward, please. Now what I want to talk about is looking at this. I'm basically the founder member and I know some of you will be members too of this organization called the Yin Crowd, all right? And what Yin stands for in my book, remember you have Yin and Yang in Feng Shui. The Yang is very male, it's very, you know, loud, aggressive. Well, not aggressive, I'm sorry, but very assertive, very focused. Rah! Now, what we need to bring into the world of business is to have this harmonic yin and yang but yin in my book stands for your inner nature and you really need to look at your inner nature all right so our soul exploration now let's just have a look i just want to really um share with you what i believe the meaning of life is for us as individuals for organizations yeah, for charities, communities, okay? The first thing, so it's all about purpose, passion, and then pride. So the first thing is really looking into yourself, your inner nature. Discover what your true purpose is and really connect to that. Then the second thing you need to look at is who are you? Hey, what's your passion? What do you love to do? Is it punk rock? Is it being an astronaut? Yeah, what do you love to do? What are your core talents, yeah? And then use those core talents, right, to serve humanity. Yeah, I think most of our speakers tonight had 
that connection of really making something special for humanity. So this pride really is, it's in giving. It's in actually helping humanity and charity. So that's what I believe we are here for and all our organisations. So, you know, I really feel that very passionately. Okay. Just talking about spirituality. Yeah. Bring organisational spirituality. People go, ah, oh, don't bring religion into the corporate world. But really, every single one of us, right, are spirits. What I like is that spirituality is about the ma not material and physical things. A lot of businesses are looked at as basically material, yeah, and um, physical things. So these are just clarity of what we're talking about. And again, soul, it's the spiritual or immaterial part of a person. Now, the nurturing of that, leaders around the world should really look and develop I think was great, um, Anne, what you were saying about the more emotional. We need to look at the more emotional side, you know, of our people. Okay, I'm going to have to rush through here. I'm very sorry. So, who are we? Women on fire, men making magic out there. And just really, I'm going to I almost have to close on this. I'd just like you all, please to close your eyes. Would you all just close your eyes? And what I want you to do is I want you to put your hands on your heart. Would you please all close your eyes? It's only going to take a minute. Put your hand on your heart. I want you to sit very comfy, comfy and I want you to take some very deep breaths now. Really breathe in very deeply down into your stomach. Right, deep in and out and in. And I'm just going to ask you a few questions. Now really connect with your heart and your being. So the first question, what is your purpose? What is your purpose? The second question, what is your passion? What makes you feel good? What's your passion? Third, what gives you pride? What gives you pride? And lastly, what will be your legacy? What will be your legacy? Okay, I've got to finish now. Um, I had lots more to say, but just to... Just to end on this one, really. The spirit or the corporate soul. Just read this one. The greater the social awareness and charitable involvement, the greater the happiness of your team. They will buzz. I've done lots of work with charity. As you mentioned, a secret millionaire. And charities at the grassroots need our help. So please, everyone in the corporate world, look at how you can help. And I'm going to be doing a white paper of evidence to look at how basically working with volunteer, vo encouraging your staff to volunteer and work with charities can actually increase the bottom line. So I'd just like to thank you so, so much. And just, that's my office. That's the house I was telling you about. My eco had. Oh, you need is love. And right, I'm going to just finish on that. Here's me, age of 50, feel absolutely fantastic. Did a bungee jump last year. So we can do anything. The world is our oyster. You know, we have the world at our feet. So please help me. Let's make an impact on humanity with all the businesses, okay? I look forward to working with you. <laughs>